is going on? This is Altone, and this is the DJI RC in one controller. Now this is an absolutely great and easy to use controller and I've loved using it for the last year flying my Mini 2. Now the model DJI RC N1 is the model that is listed by DJI, but if you're able to look on the back, mine actually says DJI RC 231 because there's another version that came with the Mavic Air 2 and I'm not sure what the actual model number on the back of that one says if you know drop that down in the comments so we'll know that but it is essentially the same controller there are some minor differences between this controller and that one and from my understanding this particular DJI RC N1 series remote will actually control multiple models of DJI drones, not just the Mini 2 or the Air 2S. And you can pair multiple DJI drones with this same controller at the same time, which means if you go out to the field and you want to take two of the drones that will pair with this DJI RC N1 controller, you can actually take them both out and fly them without having to go through the pairing process over and over again. And of course, this controller will automatically update with the firmware for the existing drone that you're actually using and make sure that it has everything that it needs in order to be able to perform with that particular DJI drone. Now, the models that the DJI RC N1 will pair with are the DJI Mini 2, the DJI Mavic Air 2, the DJI Air 2S, and the DJI Mavic 3. So the DJI RC N1 is actually using what DJI calls OcuSync 2.0. A couple of the drones that I listed will actually also use OcuSync 3.0, which increases the range and penetration of the signal back to the remote. But when paired with the DJI RC N1, that those drones will still use OcuSync 2.0. So if you want to use OcuSync 3.0 and have a little bit better connection than what the RC N1 will provide, then you'll probably just want to upgrade to the DJI RC Pro. But I can tell you from my experience that I've truly enjoyed using the DJI RC N1 controller. So now let's take a look at the layout of the controller itself. So the first thing that you see on the face of the controller is the DJI logo. <laughs> what else would you expect? Just below that, you have the mode selector switch, which has three selections, a cine or tripod mode, a normal mode, and a sport mode. So in most cases, you'll be flying in, or using the normal mode, and the normal mode will allow you to be able to capture some pretty good video without jerking or without being too aggressive and also give you time to get used to the way the drone actually functions and operates. And then to the left, what you have is a sport mode. And the sport mode actually makes your control sticks a little bit more sensitive and makes the way your drone flies a little bit more aggressive. It will speed it up or usually allow your drone to reach top speeds as long as the wind conditions are, are appropriate for that and it will move very quickly to the position that you want it in. If you put it in sport mode, it does make it a little bit more difficult to capture nice cinematic or smooth movements because the drone moves very quickly based on the inputs that you give it. I do a lot of chasing boats on the lake or jet skis, and in that case, I basically need to use my Mini 2 in sport mode in order to be able to keep up because that maxes out the top speed of the drone as it travels. But if you're gonna use sport mode in those types of situations, you definitely want to make sure that you have plenty of practice controlling the drone and you keep it in line of sight so you do not accidentally run into obstacles because there is no obstacle avoidance on a Mini 2. And even though there is obstacle avoidance on some of the other drones that the DJI RCN1 actually controls, it is not 100% foolproof. So again, if you're using sport mode, you wanna make sure you have visual on of sight and you're very careful not to run into obstacles because the drone will move much, much faster. And then you have cine mode and cine mode is the mode in which you slow the drone down drastically. Cine mode will allow you to get nice and smooth shots. Um, the drone does not respond as quickly to movements on the stick so that the gimbal can stay level or keep the horizon level and actually give you smooth movements through the shots as you're recording them. 
I do use cinema mode and I actually have gone into the settings and adjusted the cinema mode on my drone to make it a little bit softer so that I can actually really take time and get those nice smooth movements without any jerkiness out of the drone. And just below that you have your battery and connection lights. If you press on the power button those lights will tell you how much battery power that your RCN1 controller actually has and when you turn it on so it will let you know that you have a connection because the lights will be on solid while you're flying versus flashing. The other thing that those lights will do for you is when you're charging, those lights will be flashing. And once it completes or finished charging, those lights will turn off completely. So on the top right, you have the camera function selector switch, which allows you to toggle between photo and video mode. And you just want to know there that if the drone is busy either processing a photo or in the process of capturing video, it will not switch from one mode to the other. So after you take a photo, you have to wait a couple of seconds before it will allow you to switch over to video. And if you're in the middle of video, you'll get a warning message on your screen saying that it cannot switch to photo mode because you are in the process of capturing video. On the top left, you have the function button and that function button will allow you to recenter the gimbal and it will also allow you to use the scroll wheel, which we'll talk about on the top of the controller in a few minutes to zoom in and out with your camera on the drone. And of course the power button, as we spoke about just a minute ago, press release and then press and hold and it will power up your DJI RCN1 <sighs> controller. And of course, if you press the power button while the controller is off, it will let you know what your battery level is using the indicator lights below, as we mentioned earlier. So to the left of the mode button, you have the pause and return to home button. And that button will allow you to send a signal to your drone to tell it to return to the, the home point or to take off position and land. And of course, if for some reason you notice that your drone is gonna run into some obstacles on the way back in its return to home path, you can tap that pause button and stop it before it runs into anything. Because of course, even if your drone does have obstacle avoidance, it is not always 100% and you need to be aware of where your aircraft is and how it's functioning at all times. And quickly to the bottom, not much there, <laughs> you have your left and right control stick storage and in the middle you have a USB-C port which you can use in order to charge up your controller. And once again, while your controller is charging, you will see your indicator lights on the front of your controller flashing and they will stop and go out completely once your controller is completely charged. And now to the top of the remote. On the very top is the phone holder and the phone holder also doubles as the antenna. That is where your antenna is located across the top in order for your signal to go out to your drone as it's flying. And when you lift up your antenna or cell phone holder, you'll have stored underneath that your cable. My DJI RCN1 actually came with my Mini 2 and in the box along with it came multiple cables. I've upgraded my cable connection to, to a longer one. So if I wanted to use different attachments on my phone or on my tablet and use them for the purpose of flying my drone, I had that extra length in cable in order to do so. And on the top right, right by where your index finger will possibly rest is your shutter button. And that shutter button will allow you to either take a picture or it will allow you to start and stop your video recording, depending upon what function or mode that you currently have your drone set in. And on the top left, you have your gimbal control wheel. And what that gimbal control wheel will allow you to do is two things. It will allow you to move your gimbal up and down so that you can either see what's directly in front of your drone or just below your drone or whatever angle that you would like for your camera to be sitting at. And and if you hold a function button down on the front of the controller and move the, the scroll wheel, that will allow you to zoom in and out with the camera on your drone. So there's a couple of different settings that you can change on the DJI RCN1 controller that you might wanna be aware of. Most of those changes will take place within the settings in the app on your cell phone or tablet that you're using to control your DJI drone. You can make adjustments to the sensitivity of each one of the modes that are controlled by the mode switch on the front of your DJI N1 controller. And you also can control the settings of your control sticks. When you receive your drone or just a single DJI N1 controller, your controls are already set up to what is called mode two. In mode two, pressing forward 
or back on your control stick will adjust your drone's elevation up and down. And pushing your left control stick left or right will control what is called yaw or the rotation of the drone to the left and to the right. On your right stick in mode two, pressing forward or backwards on the control stick will cause your drone to move forward or in reverse in the direction the drone is facing. And pressing right or left on the right control stick will move your drone to the left or right based on the direction that the drone is facing. Now going into your settings, like I said, you can change those controls and you can change to a mode one, leave it on mode two or change to mode three, as well as set custom settings for how your sticks operate. But I suggest as always, when you first get your drone and you begin to fly as a beginner, that you leave all of your settings the way they are out of the box. Get used to the way your drone operates and flies before you start making adjustments to the sensitivity or the function of any of the controls on your DJI N1 controller. So I truly hope this helped you out in some way. If it did, I'd absolutely love to hear from you down in the comment section. Let me know what your questions are. I do plan on doing a video in the future, actually taking it out flying the drone and, and actually demonstrating some of those controls and some of what you can expect as you begin to fly your drone for the first time. Thanks again so much for stopping by. I look forward to talking to you down in the comment section and seeing you in the next video. Have a fantastic day. Talk to you again very soon.